Positive cash flow. It's one of my favorite ways in which you can make money off property through a recurring income. Now, property is not always cash flow positive. It's got an evil twin, negative cash flow. And in today's educational, I'm going to show you what a negative cash flow investment looks like and why it looks that way, as well as what a positive cash flow investment looks like. And we'll end with some of the sub strategies under positive cash flow, hopefully helping you find the perfect one that fits your needs. I educate people to reach financial freedom through property through cash flow positive investments, specializing in the low income multi let residential market. Positive cash flow is a really simple strategy. You have to find a property where the rental income that that property generates is greater than the monthly expenses, leaving you with a surplus, meaning that you have a positive cash flow. Rent greater than expenses left with monthly profit means you have a positive cash flow investment. If we look at our different investor archetypes, this would be the landlord type investor, someone who's looking to either accumulate in the low income market or curate in the high income market. Now with this positive cash flow investment, you've, you've essentially got your for rent strategy. So you're buying a house and renting it out. Within buying and renting, you've got two types of cash flow situations. You have your positive cash flow, which we've discussed is an income, a rental income greater than your expenses, leaving you with a monthly profit. But you also have the evil twin, which is the negative cash flow, the other side of the same coin. This is when the rental income is less than the monthly expenses, leaving you with the shortfall. Now, this negative cash flow situation is how I used to think all properties were. I thought the only way you can buy property is by buying it and then funding the shortfall for five to seven, maybe 10 years, then it starts to break even and eventually you start to profit. And, and my thinking was, you know, if that's the case, how do you scale? Because you can only buy a property every seven to 10 years. Let me show you an example of a negative cash flow investment. Your new build strategy, which is very popular, this is when you buy from a developer or you buy a brand new unit in a building, they tend to always be negative cash flow. Here's an example. This is a uh, property for sale in the, no in the northern suburbs in Cape Town, in Portofino. The price for a, a two bedroom is 1.1 million. Pictures look lovely. This is a really nice interior. It's obviously fancy. It's going to look nice. From a financial perspective, I don't think it's gonna make sense. Here I've got the property 24 bond calculator. I've put in the purchase price. I've assumed that I'm gonna get 100% finance, which is pretty common for new builds. I've used 9% interest, which is prime lending as of today, the 9th of August, the day of shooting this video, over 20 years, giving me a monthly bond repayment of 10,157 Rand. Some once-off costs, which are your buying costs. So the numbers on a month-to-month -month basis, all right, we've got a bond repayment as an expense item of 10,157. We have to pay levies and rates and taxes. We have to pay for provisions, maintenance, management, insurance, those kind of things. The best rent you're probably gonna get for this property is about seven and a half thousand, leaving you in a negative cash flow position. You're spending 5,000 Rand of your salary or other income to fund the shortfall. This is not a cash flow positive property. It's still a cash flow investment, but it's negative cash flow probably for five to seven years. And negative cash flow I tend to avoid. Here's another example. This is a Sydney Court, which is an iGrow development um, sale. iGrow is, a, is essentially a marketing agency for developers. And they've also got a management arm. I do, I do recommend their management arm. Here is the Sydney Court a breakdown as per um, as per iGrow's recommendation. The first thing you'll note here on the left-hand side is some of the monthly income and expenses. So 5,000 Rand of rent, plus they give rental assist for a couple of years. The only reason they give rental assist is because they wanna try and incentivize you to buy knowing that it's negative cash flow. Uh, levies, rates and taxes, and then rental insurance. Also, just on the, the, the section to the right, you'll see finance, where they've used a 7% interest, this, um, proposals obviously from from a couple of months back when the interest rate was still seven percent prime and they're doing it over 30 years so they're trying to reduce the bond repayment again trying to show a better cash flow than there is so if we look at the actual financial breakdown you can see um year one to ten shown on the top in the red 
And then you've got your uh, cash flow statement. So you've got your rental income plus rental assist for the first few years. And then you have all of your expenses. And that bottom line where the green arrow shows, it's showing you your monthly surplus, meaning your monthly profit or your positive cash flow, or in red, your shortfall, your loss. So here, a perfect example, the first six years of holding this property, you are losing you know, between 980 and 142 Rand per month. It's not a lot of money that you're losing. I mean, most people with a steady job would probably quite easily be able to afford that. And then in red, you can see I've highlighted that they say this is the equity gain that you get. Please note that equity, gaining an equity is speculation. And all of these developers will, will, will guarantee you that there's going to be 10% capital growth year on year. That is absolute bullshit. Sorry for my language. But it's important that you know that they're trying to sell you a dream. They're trying to make this uh, investment look better than it is. Equity gains are always speculation. Now, when you're going for the, the cash flow positive route, you know, you can't be going for new builds or in the suburbs. You want to be going the low income market where your appreciation tends to be a bit lower. So when speculating about the future, when you go cash flow positive, if that's your main focus, you're going the low income areas, don't anticipate any capital gains. That's just a cherry on top. Make the investment based purely on is there a positive cash flow and what's my return? Don't let the appreciation bug you. But if you're going the new build strategy where your, your, your income and your cash flow is negative, you can start to look at some of the appreciation value. Don't listen to what the developer has to say in terms of you know guaranteed 10%. They're just they're salespeople. Go and look at some of the stats. Go look at Lightstone. Go look at TPN. Go look at the TPN rental monitor. Go look at the Lightstone housing price index. Go look at those data points to then determine what your appreciation is. But yes, with the negative cash flow route, you take appreciation more into account. So that's the evil twin. That's the, that, that's the type of investment that I tend to avoid. And that's the reason most of the time that I avoid your suburbs and prefer to go to the low income areas because that is where the cash flow is. That's where the positive cash flow is. So let's have a look. Here's an example of a property in the Joburg uh, CBD. This is a four bedroom property, 82 square meters, uh, 400,000 in Berea. So the first thing to note here is that it's uh, 82 square meters, which is uh, probably that it's a two bedroom property or originally was. And what they've done is they've sublet or sort of multi-letted the property. So they've turned one bedroom into two bedrooms to bring four tenants in, making it more cash flow positive. Right, so that's how you can justify a higher level of rent. You just have to be sure that you can still get financing on it because the banks sometimes are a bit hesitant regarding multi lets. But looking on the inside of the property, it looks pretty well maintained. It looks you know, in decent enough condition. It's in the CBD, so it is quite high risk. Let's look at the numbers. So bond repayment, let's assume you can get a 90% loan. The banks are happy with the risk. They're happy with the, with the financials of the building. They're happy with how many tenants are staying there. The levies and the rates and taxes are quite a big chunk, 1850 You've got provisions, maintenance, bad debts, delinquent behavior, you'll have to have a managing agent, all of these different things. So that's why your maintenance and your, and your provisions per month is just under 2,000 Rand, which is quite a lot. The rent that you can currently get on this property based on the advertising from the agent is 8,000. So that's four tenants paying 2,000 Rand per bed each. This gives you a cash flow positive so this is profit from day one of 1,290. Now you might be asking, okay, that, that, that's amazing, but how do you know which areas I should be looking at? Which area, you know, CBD of Joburg, that's not really where I wanna be investing. Where can I find other areas where there is a likelihood of a positive cash flow? That's when you have to use the gross yield indicator. The gross yield indicator, and I use the word indicator specifically because it's not used to buy. It's not a buying decision, it's an indicator. What you have to do is you have to take the annual rent of an area and divide it by the purchase price. So for example, if you're buying in a, a property that has got a 10,000 Rand rent and the purchase price is 800,000, annual rent divided by the purchase price of 800,000 will give you 0.15 times 100 will equal 15%. A 15% is the minimum yield that I recommend to now I tell my students to look for when they're looking for areas to, to investigate. If you want to know more about this, go check out my video specifically focused on the gross yield calculation. So this is one of those main strategies. You've got your cash flow, you've got your appreciation. If you're going the cash flow route, focus on positive cash flow. The evil twin, the negative cash flow is not where you want to be starting out. 
Later on, you can hedge your bets and you can start buying new builds and start having the appreciation play. But first, get a few cash flow positive investments, properties where the rent is greater than the monthly expenses, leaving you with a monthly profit. Within the positive cash flow space, there are a couple of sub strategies that I'll often teach my students and, and work through with them. One of them is the single let model. This is when you're buying an apartment, a two bedroom apartment, and you have one tenant. You've got the multi let model. Here you can have anything from you know having a two bedroom apartment with four tenants to buying a block of flats. Your student accommodation is a very, very positive and, and, and profitable cash flow strategy. And then you've also got more your upper end, your cash flow, your, your commercial investments, retail, buying shopping centers, malls, or offer space. I've done a video on each one of these sub strategies from multi lets to commercial and everything in between. So make sure you go and check out that playlist. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Property investing can be scary. And sometimes it's nice to have an experienced seasoned investor look over your deals. That's why I've created my property coaching program where I sit with you on a one-to-one -one basis and help you through the process of buying your first investment property. If this sounds interesting, book a free 15-minute call with me and we'll see if it's the right fit.